So the other thing I like is the difference in electric types in this matchup. So Joe opting for Reggie Lecky, who is the fastest Pokemon in the format, can go for Volt Switch, something into the uh, into the back. Obviously has access to Electro Web to lower the speed on the other end. So say something like the Lunala or um, you know Thunders that might be faster than Eveltal. If you can Electro Web, you can then make Eveltal faster. Compared to Aaron's end with the Thunderous, the other side, Incineroar is there, and Thunderous has Defiant. So Thunderous is really on the team to say, if you wanna, if you wanna bring Incineroar, who's the most popular Pokemon, you know, in the format, you're gonna pay for it. And so it's really a deterrent to lowering the attacks on Aaron's physical attackers like the Groudon in this matchup. Yeah, it's like if you want to be lowering the attack at this point, it's at, you know, what cost? Because the last thing you want to be doing is, you know, enabling this. Thunderous all of a sudden allowing it to be building up this attack, but time to head into this match. It will be the Thunderous that we were talking about to start here, and Venusaur is on both ends of the field, but Joe going to be leading with that signature Eveltal. Yeah, so right now, the Thunderous is the fastest Pokemon on the field here, so obviously both of these trainers know it, but they both have access to Groudons in the back. So it's a bit of a chicken match right now. Do you expect, uh, very common for the dynamic speed changes, if you switch Groudon in, thanks to Venusaur's chlorophyll ability, it will double its speed instantly and then be able to attack faster. So does one of the trainers do it? And yes, Joe is deciding to get the sun here. Yeah, swap out the Eveltal. It's going to be bringing the sun. Also, make sure this Eveltal can't get hit with an electric type move. Aaron going to just go ahead and just go on the aggressive. Going to be a Dynamax to start out the match. Fifth round heading into the tournament. And it is going to be the Max Thunderous. That's very scary if Joe clicks Sleep Powder because you have to you have to worry because of Chlorophyll, it will be attacking before Thunderous. At this point, it's down to it. It is going to be going for the Sleep Powder, but it's going to actually be Safety Goggles. So yeah, maybe it's dangerous, but it's not going to be doing anything against those Safety Goggles. And a Sleep Powder in return, well, is ground on. No Goggles. It's going right to sleep. This is going to allow now for a Max Airstream to be coming out from Eren. That's going to be getting a lot of damage onto this Venusaur. It does hold on thanks to this Focus Sash. It is also going to be spilling building up the speed on Aaron's side of the field. Safety goggles revealed on the Thunderous is great for Aaron here. It looks like Groudon forgot his goggles at home, so he will be forced to stay asleep this turn, which is actually huge, because that first turn of sleep is mandatory, and he just switched in, so he hasn't even gotten a chance to attack yet. You do have the sun up, so you hope that your Venusaur can potentially win the speed tie if you are Joe, but now that you're down to one HP, uh, you can just you know, you can't sleep powder again, so do you want to save Venusaur for later and pivot into something else? Or is it somewhat of a, of a hindrance to your team right now because you can't sleep powder either of the things on the field? I love the, the safety goggles because this is definitely a meta call because a lot of other times on Thunderous, you can run something like Life Orb or something more offensive to give you some, some damage, but instead you're going to stop those safety goggles. Wait a second, though. It's going to be Joseph going for a Dynamax of, oh, and we just saw this ground and going to sleep, so maybe making sure that you know it's not going to be taking too much damage from an attack this first turn of dynamax is going to be essentially useless besides you know the double hp at that point very interesting choice here instead though the venusaur is just looking to finish off the opposing venusaur on joseph's end so that is going to be going down no sleep powders available from here on out max darkness to be hitting into the ground on going to be doing very minimal damage at this point but i think now one of the biggest things that we're looking on from Joseph's side we know that was the first turn of sleep now at what point is this going to be waking up because you know it could be two turns it could be three it might just sleep the whole max also uh two note turn one joe's venusaur went first and turn two aaron's venusaur attacked first so that is confirmed that it's a speed tie so it's important information for both these trainers to know throughout the rest of this set is that they don't necessarily have the speed advantage the dynamax seems you know it seems confusing at first but joe really just wants to pre preserve the ground on as much as possible and so when you get that boost that double hp stat when you dynamax that was more important than preserving the dynamax later because that max darkness did not do too much damage he does have a special defense drop which would mean a grass attack from venusaur would actually be a lot stronger into the ground on now yeah, and first turn, it was all about the Sludge Bomb into the Venusaur. This time is going to be that Leaf Storm, and that is going to be dealing a hefty amount of damage. Looking for more damage, though, Max Lightning coming out into the Beltal did go for the Protect, so it's going to get a nice amount of damage on it. But that's all it's going to be good for at this point. It's interesting, though, 
is going to set the electric terrain, but of course that's not going to be affecting this Eveltal. So Venusaur still has a path to be trying to put that to bed. And what the Protect on, on Eveltal shows is this is not Assault Vest. So the Assault Vest is likely somewhere else on Joe's team. A lot of times we've actually seen, uh, we actually saw Joe run Assault Vest ground on in Salt Lake City. So uh, it's not, it wouldn't be a out of the realm of possibility that that's where the AV is held. Eveltal now has another held item that Aaron has to figure out. So is it, you know, black glasses to increase its damage on, on dark type moves? Is it something completely off the wall that you're not prepared for? The uh, with Aaron in such a strong position right now, a you know four to three lead, and Joe's Dynamax Pokemon is asleep. This might be the rest of this game might just be trying to fish out information, just to try to learn what Eveltal's held item is, who Joe's you know fourth Pokemon is in the back in this potential matchup. That might be Aaron's priority on top of, of course, winning game one. We were talking about just the Pokemon lead, but Aaron hasn't even taken damage at this point either. Venusaur gonna go for the swap out and bring the Incineroar in. That will get the Intimidate onto this out on that is sleeping. Not the only one with the pivots though. It is going to be an Incineroar in response. Sure, it'll be the Intimidate onto the opposing Incineroar, but what we're looking at is the fact that it will be activating this Defiant. And if this round doesn't wake up, this is gonna get even worse of a situation than it already is. Yeah, uh, that wild charge will be pretty strong. So uh, as we talked about Defiant raising the attack of in the Thunders instead of lowering it, that is punishing the Incineroar for that switch in. In return though, it will be the match fall. It is going to be a wake up and that is going to be a super effective hit. Sure, it brings the Sandstorm, but it's also going to be taking this Thunderous out. So it got its one supercharged attack but then it's going to be eliminated from the field and even out this Pokemon count. And now uh, for the rest of this game, so the drought was going to end at the end of next turn. So now if Aaron did bring Groudon as his fourth Pokemon in this matchup, he does have the availability to reset the sun on the field eventually to make his Venusaur very fast. He switched it out on the previous turn so that he could reset from the special attack drops on, on the Leaf Storm onto the Venusaur. Uh, so now by bringing Groudon in here, Joe is in a is in a difficult spot. His Dynamax is over, so that actually makes the choice a little bit easier to switch Groudon out if you want to. But he's already at half health, and you're in against you know the the Fire type Incineroar and the Groudon, and you know Venusaur is in the back. So I don't know you know what else Joe is expecting out of the Groudon. It might be the full health Eveltal in the back that could be the best option. As now the best damage attacker on Aaron's end of Thunderous has been knocked out. So Eveltal is not worried about getting hit by a wild charge or anything that would be super effective at that point, unless it would be a uh, a, a non-same type attack bonus rock attack from the from the Groudon. Yeah, well, even just the fact that it, it just seems like an uphill battle at this point from Joseph, the fact that, you know, that sleep powder on that first turn didn't connect, but being able to get that Thunderous out to maybe have a better end game with this Eveltal is going to be nice. But until then, you just got to be getting this damage out. We have Flare Blitz coming from Aaron. Going to try and deal a good amount into the ground on. Not going to be picking up that KO. It will take some damage in return, though. And it is also going to be revealed that it does have a berry on its side to be recovering that HP. Yeah, a different kind of berry because many of the incinerators we've seen throughout this metagame in Series 12 have been running Shuka Berry to help against the damage output from a super effective ground type attack. So the fact that Aaron is running a recovery berry means that uh, maybe it's potentially trained his Incineroar to sur to survive a, a Precipice Blades while Groudon's intimidated. It must be some sort of calculation where Aaron feels confident enough to drop the Shuka Berry and then uh, gain the Citrus Berry to actually get more health recovery so Incineroar can stay on the field for a longer time. Yeah, and I mean, the longer Incineroar gets to stick around, the more of a hassle that it can be. At this point, the Incineroar on Joseph's end is going to be swapping out and take down the Incineroar onto Aaron's end. That is definitely going to be a nice, healthy pickup. Of course, the Berry had the had recovered the HP. Not going to matter against this ground on. It's going to be a Citrus for the ground on on Aaron's side. So Berries all around. It will be played in return. The ground on, though, just managing to survive the hit. Yeah, four HP on That's this huge. ground on. So the fact that it Dynamaxed while asleep 
you know, forever ago at this point and has still hung on this long is a, a really nice, uh, a really nice for Joe. You do have Venusaur back on the field while the sun is up. There still are a couple of turns. There's three turns of sun left. So this Venusaur at full HP is going to be very fast. If it is holding a Focus Ash, like how we saw Joe's was, that means you're going to have to dedicate two separate attacks into knocking it out. So that could be a Precipice Blade's Oblivion Wing or, you know, potential, you know, fire attack and then another Oblivion Wing from the Evelto. Evelto, if he does have the Oblivion Wing, can recover some of the HP it, uh, of the damage it does every turn. So if you hit Venusaur super effectively, that's actually a lot of damage, which would mean a pretty sizable amount of recovery going on to onto the Evelto. So uh, Joe definitely doesn't feel like he is out of it at this point yet. Yeah, it does have a Pokemon advantage, even if nothing is looking too healthy. Evelto gonna go for that Protect as Groundhog is going to be KO'd by this Sludge Bomb that's going to be putting both of these trainers down to their final two Pokemon. The Electricity also going to be eliminated from the field. Aaron really pinning Joe on that turn with a, a any decision he wanted to do. The safe Sludge Bomb Rock Slide, what it did was if you protect the Evelto, it doesn't matter because I knock out Groudon any with Sludge Bomb. However, if you go offensive and try to bring my, my Venusaur down to its Sash, you're leaving yourself open to a Rock Slide and getting hit super effectively. So that was a really smart play out of Aaron, who is a, a trainer that you've seen throughout the years is really well equipped to dealing with not only his own best turns of protection, Protecting, but also the opponent's best turns of when they want to protect. So very safe and very consistent play out of Aaron. And now with the two to two count and two Pokemon weak to Rock Slide, he uh, is, is looking strong. At this point, though, that Incineroar hitting the field does mean it gets a fake out and it is going to be hitting into the Venusaur. That's going to make sure it flinches as well, break any potential slash and allow this Eveltal to hit a huge Oblivion Wing. That's a lot of HP recovered at this point. And it's now going to be Aaron down to his final Pokemon and Sword Dance going to be revealed in this spot. So sure, a two to one count, but now a really boosted attack. So Aaron realized that the Incineroar switching in lowers his attack. So if you have Sword Stance, it's going to raise your attack by two stages. So that will negate the Incineroar's attack, make you stronger. As well as Rock Slide, as I mentioned, it is not, a, you know, Groudon's not a Rock type, so he doesn't get the benefit of that extra damage from it. The, and, it and it's a spread attack, but the, the foul, foul play! play! Sure, you might have boosted your attack for a potential great end game position, but that's just going to make this Eveltal so strong. And despite a very bumpy start, Joe going to be taking that first match. And what an adjustment coming out. Groudon slept walk through his Dynamax turns <laughs> and still won the game. That's actually crazy. Uh, it looked like Joe was kind of waiting for that fourth attack reveal or the fourth move reveal on Groudon on Aaron's end because once he saw the Swords Dance, you now know you have the foul play, which does damage based off of your target's attack stat. So not off of Eveltals, instead off of the Groudons. So with the Swords Dance, it actually made it even stronger. And like we mentioned in the middle of that match, it was wasn't over because once Thunderous went down, the Aaron did not have a reliable for, uh, source of damage to stop Evelto from knocking out the Venusaur and also from, you know, enduring a hit from a rock slide. So that might be Aaron's adjustment here in this game is the Thunderous actually was very solid for him. Those first yeah. three turns, very effective, had the max darkness, had the uh, the knockout with wild charge. It was it was solid, but once it went down, the, the Evelto had free reign over the battlefield. So yeah. what can Aaron adjust in this matchup. It doesn't look like it's Lunala because the Evelto and Cinero is pretty much Lunala's worst nightmare. Um, yeah. So is there anything that Aaron can do here? You can rely on Sleep Powder because you know you have you have uh, safety goggles where Groudon doesn't, uh, but you're going to need some strong adjustments. I think what's really interesting too, going back, because there was a turn where the Venusaur went for the Sludge Bomb to KO the Groudon that had four HP at that point. And you were talking about how, you know, Aaron had put Joe in like this weird pin to where something was going to get KO'd. But then thinking back to it too, the Groudon getting KO'd at that moment while the Eveltal protected allowed this Incineroar to come in for free to then get that fake out to make sure this Venusaur couldn't be doing anything else, any more shenanigans, to allow him to then take care of all these threats just one at a time. So we were talking about how Aaron was able to put this pressure on, put Joe in a weird situation, but it was almost like playing into his own hands at that point too, because that just allowed him the perfect end game 
and to take these Pokemon down one by one. That's a great point because it's a, sometimes it is actually beneficial for your opponent to knock out your Pokemon. And then at that point with a four HP Groudon just barely hanging on who had not been too effective throughout that match, that turn, if the Sword Dance came out on that turn maybe instead yeah. of instead of the knockout, you get the you know attack boost earlier on. Uh, so that might be in a, you know something in retrospect Aaron might want to look into, but you know he didn't have access to all the information. I know, but that is huge information revealed just at that end of the game, too. I feel like both players were able to get a lot of healthy information into this. And the fact, too, that we were talking about Aaron playing, you know, something that was good, but sometimes a little bit of different choices that you might not necessarily expect. Just managing to get that information. On the last turn, like, nonetheless, with that sword Zant, being able to get that information, knowing that, sure, if I do something passive again, where I'm just going for a swap or a protect, that is a consistent danger that Aaron could just try and set up. That's fantastic for this game, too. I do also love for Aaron, the Thunderous, it was so confident of him turn one, because he's like, either Venusaur misses Sleep Pattern and he doesn't learn my held item, <laughs> or he gets baited into Sleep Patterning the Thunderous, and I just get a really strong attack off, bringing it down to its Focus Sash. So I do think that the Thunderous is really important to the keys to success for Aaron, maybe preserving it in the later in the back, having one of those cheeky turns where you switch in before Incineroar does and you get the free Defiant boost. Like, uh, just because Thunderous and Incineroar are not on the field on turn one does not mean they might not interact. Yeah, interesting adjustments coming out from both players. We saw that Thunderous from Aaron the first time around, but instead maybe preserving it, maybe not bringing it, is going to be leading with the ground on instead. But Reggie Alecki, who didn't make an appearance the first time around, going to be joining the battle. Yep, so Joe deciding that obviously Reggie Alecki, who, as we mentioned in the... Uh, in the team preview is incredibly fast, faster than Thunderous, even if it was here, uh, is able to put out a lot of pressure. The only thing you have to worry about now that the drought is on the field this turn is Aaron has shown Sleep Powder. So depending on how the Reggie Lucky is trained, because Venusaur is not typically fast, it's you invest fully in speed, but then when it's doubled, it usually it's faster than most things. If the Reggie Lucky is fully invested in speed, it might Ooh, not work out. It doesn't, it's not going to matter at this point. Sure, the Venusaur is going to be faster, but that is a huge sleep powder miss coming out, and that's going to leave the door wide open from this Electroweb. Of course, not doing anything to the ground, but it's the Venusaur that is going to be slowed in attack, and that is huge considering its ability makes it want to go fast. A huge foul play as well, hitting into this ground on Slotcher. We'll get a bit of health back with that berry, bring it just up of half. The Sword Zant's coming out. You know now that this Eveltal going so fast is going to put that pressure on that. This ground on, not necessarily safe if this Venusaur doesn't put pressure back on this Eveltal. Yeah, Aaron has to worry because the Venusaur is now slower than Reggie Lucky thanks to the Electroweb. You might have to waste a turn switching out, and what that does is it allows Joe to either freely attack, either, you know there's no other ground type, right? You see Groudon on the right slot, so he can Dynamax Reggie Lucky if he wants to, which is a really strong Dynamax option. You have really strong base-powered uh, Max Lightnings, as well as your ability to, you know, do more damage with electric attacks, and if it's holding a magnet, which will boost it by 20% even more. We know it doesn't have Sash because Venusaur is holding that. Uh, so this is uh, a very tough spot for the Venusaur slot because he's slower than the Reggie Lucky and now the Reggie Lucky is Dynamax. You gotta love a Dynamax Reggie Lucky. That is for sure. And most certainly going to be the fastest thing out on the field now, thanks to the Electroweb last turn. So definitely looking at it to apply this pressure, but not going to be the only one. Aaron going to be responding with the Dynamax in the weird spot, because, you know, the Groundhog did just set up with this Swords Dance. It is going to be going and try and making, you know, taking advantage of that with the Dynamax. Right, but that will let Joe take advantage of the Swords Dance and foul play into the ground on. He does have an increase to his HP by Dynamaxing, but he still is a, a plus two attacker. The Max Strike coming out. That is going to be dealing a good chunk of damage, way more than an Electroweb would, into the Venusaur. But more importantly, going to be slowing the speed on both of these Pokemon as well. So if there was any, you know, questions about any speed interactions, but the Foul Play is dealing so much damage, it's just not going to be enough. And Venusaur, sure, it has been slowed down, but these Sleep Powders are still going to have an impact. Even with the Life Orb, that was not enough to knock out Groudon. And now at 14 health, Aaron is able to respond and get rid of the Veltal. 
Veldo, that absolutely no chance against the Blessed Ground. That is for sure. And considering just how much work that Veldo put in the first game, that is a huge blow at this point. Reggie Lucky does at least get to sit pretty. And Aaron, he did take a lot of damage out on the field. And we do know that there is that max strike capability on Reggie Lucky. So it's not like the ground is immune to anything this Reggie Lucky throws at it. That is the big benefit for Joe on this turn is that ground on being so low, even though it hung on uh, during the previous turn, now uh, any type of light breeze will be able to knock it out since it only has 14 HP. Uh, so I'm, I don't think a fake out would do it since uh, fake out does have, you know, has a very low base power. So you might want to fake out the Venusaur slot instead and then max strike into Groudon. You don't, it does somewhat sometimes feel a little bad wasting a Dynamax attack into a Pokemon who is so low HP, but understanding that this Groudon because of the Swords Dance is such a huge threat and can max Quake your, your Reggie Lucky, you have to make sure that you can handle it. So does Aaron go for a more defensive option potentially in max guarding? Something that, you know, we've seen can be really game-changing is when you're Dynamax, sometimes max guard is much more effective than whatever Dynamax attack you want to go for because you're really putting your opponent in a very difficult position. And that's exactly what we're, we're going to see here. It will be the max guard coming out, but instead the max lightning going to be hitting into that Venusaur slot. Feeling comfortable that, yes, I am going to be taking out this Venusaur with this Max Reggie Alecki. What's to keep in mind, too, the ground does have that speed drop, so maybe just, okay, I can just clean it up with something else. I'm not too concerned about it. This covers for the Max Guard as well. The Flare Blitz is going to be the move of choice. It's not going to be doing too much, but it's not wasting the Max move onto that Venusaur slot, and it's going to be taking Joe's first KO. Really smart move out of Joe there because because of the max strike, Groudon was now slower than Incineroar, so you were naturally faster. So your Flare Blitz would have been able to obviously take out the Groudon here. So by Reggie Lucky targeting down Venusaur, you essentially didn't have to worry about getting max Quake on that turn. Yeah, and now Aaron revealing that Lunala going to be brought into this. And this is big too because... Aaron's already gotten rid of the Veltol from Joe. We were talking just how, you know, not great of a matchup that is, Lunal all considering, but Veltol's gone. That's going to give Lunal a chance to make some waves. Max strike from Reggie Alecki. Critical <laughs> hit, not like that's just going to matter. That's just for a little bit of a little bit of fun there. Just a little bit of damage done to make sure this ground on is going to be completely KO'd. It's going to get a speed drop from the Lunal as well. Not that that's, you know, too troublesome. Instead, Incinero with the parting shot to try and slow it down in other ways. Aaron is down to his final two Pokemon here. He has to reveal it either the Incineroar or Reggie or Thunderous. Reggie like he's already there. Thunderous is likely in uh in the last in the last slot. So Joe with that parting shot. This Lunala is never able to switch out. It, it can get back up to neutral if it uses the Meteor Beam with its Power Herb, uh, but it will never get back even stronger. So when you preserve that Incineroar for later on for even more parting shot pressure, slowly but surely you will whittle down the Lunala's damage abilities. Yeah, and not allowing it to start, you know, snowballing in its own right is going to be absolutely huge. And what's also really big about this parting shot is the reposition that's coming out because that Meteor Beam would have done a lot of damage into this Incineroar. Oh, yeah. Instead, ground on taking the hit, doing pebbles worth of damage. Yeah, that was a, 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 really, a really safe switch also for Joe because he understood that he was able to... Uh, that he was going to be safe on Incineroar, not worried about taking it. And again, the use of Max Strike instead of Max Lightning, you can't physically target the Lunala with Max Strike because it's a ghost type. Yeah. So instead, Joe opted for the 14 HP Groudon, <laughs> which you knew obviously it's going to knock out and lower the speed on the Lunala there. So it was kind of like a, a double served reasoning to click Max Strike there. Yeah. Kept Incineroar safe, switched in Groudon. Now Groudon's very healthy. And Lunala has wasted its big move. It can't, cl it can't click Meteor Beam again because it's now a two turn attack because of the power of being consumed. It technically so. could, it's just not really I, ideal I at you, this point. I guess if you could. really wanted to go that way. But it's it's a really tricky position that Joe has Aaron in now because Aaron down to the last two Pokemon does have Incineroar on the field for a fake out pressure, but look at the ground on his health. Look at the Reggie Alecki. There is now Incineroar in the back as well that can be swapping in to lower that ground on. Oh yeah, for sure. And so uh, the the healthy thing for Aaron was wait till he Veltles out and let Lunala come in and sweep. But Joe was able to preserve the rest of his field so well that it didn't actually he didn't actually need Eveltel in this matchup to be his win condition. 
Not at all. It will be a fake out from the imposing Incineroar and Joe bringing his own Incineroar in. A Trick Room is going to be revealed coming out. So that speed drop that we were talking about earlier, actually just going to be more of a benefit than anything. And a late game Trick Room can sometimes be the difference. It can be, and a Moon Geist Beam from the Lunala, now that it is slow, can be pretty strong. But the issue is once you attack, let's say into the Reggie Lecky slot, you're now sitting wide open for Incineroar to hit you with a dark attack that you are four times weak to. Yeah, and that is going to be enough to be taking out the KO on that Reggie Lecky. No issue whatsoever. I mean, we did see earlier that there was the Flare Blitz on Joe's Incineroar. So thinking of how it's going to go, actually is still going to have it so wasn't necessarily sure just considering what people like to be running but instead showing that throw drop is there dealing a good amount of damage considering the ability at that point and now zone ground on to come out and join the party yeah if throw chop did that much at minus one and with shadow shield intact <laughs> yeah. you can imagine how strong it'll be uh once the shadow shield is broken now and actually hitting lunala for all of its you know four times super effective damage the other thing you have to worry about is the groudon who is still relatively healthy clicking precipice blades or whatever attack it wants to go for maybe even a fire attack while the sun is up uh, eventually that lunala will be whittled down enough so they wouldn't be able uh to to handle the incineroar and another moon guys beam dealing Honestly, just not nearly enough damage at this point, too. It needs to be dealing so much more to be making that impact. Flare Blitz will get a good amount, but it's not going to be enough to be cleaning up that KO, and that would have been crucial at this point, especially Throat Chop. We saw how much damage it did before. It is going to be taking that Lunala out, and now two to one with Joseph still being able to go for a big press display. That is going to be a clean KO over onto this Incineroar, and it's a great match, but Joe's going to be taking it in a 2-0. That is an impressive 2-0, considering the caliber of both